Chapter 1 Upside Down Bishop Eli King is a formidable character. Renowned in Lancaster County as one of the most conservative, by the book, bishops in the area, Bishop Eli gives off the air of someone who rules a small dictatorship and not just 60 or so families in his two districts. For one, he looks just like Abraham Lincoln with his canny looking, deep set eyes, prominent chin, and antique beard and clothes. Abe Lincoln with a bowl cut, that is. Rumor has it that Eli will put the ban, excommunication, on you for putting one toe over the ordnung, the written and unwritten rules of the Amish. I'm a little scared of him already, and we've only just begun our chat. It doesn't help that I'm perched delicately on the rim of a bathtub in the middle of a construction site where Eli works. The only way he would agree to meet with me is if I questioned him during his lunch hour, as he didn't want to take time away from his employer. Coated with carpentry dust, munching an egg salad sandwich, he accepted my thanks for making time during his lunch break. Being taught to love work makes all the difference, he said, taking another bite. There's not much spare time when the budget is tight. The truth is, the budget has been tight for Eli and his people. Even though overall, the Amish have hunkered down and weathered the economic hailstorm of the past couple of years much better than the rest of us, they haven't been completely insulated. According to Amish expert Eric Wesner, author of Success Made Simple, an inside look at why Amish businesses thrive, the people have felt the decreased demand that comes in a downturn. A decline in business can trickle down through the community and even affect those businesses that are strictly Amish-oriented, he said. So, for example, instead of buying a new buggy for your soon-to-be 16-year-old son for a few thousand dollars from the local Amish carriage shop, you might be more inclined to pick one up at the auction for half that. Adapting to shaky financial times is something the Amish do extremely well. Instead of buying new buggies, they'll buy used. Jake the Builder will remodel old homes instead of constructing new ones. One plain housewife I spoke to said that when times are tight, she'll substitute maple syrup, tapped from her own trees, of course, for sugar in her baking and cooking. Wesner tells of a sawmill owner who switched to vegetable oil, acquired free as a throwaway product from local restaurants, to substitute for diesel, amounting to a $1,000 monthly savings. The Amish are resourceful, to be sure, but there's much more to their money success than that. Why have they managed to do so well, even in the midst of the recession? Eli offered some insights. We scrape the bottom of the barrel more than most, Bishop Eli told me with an Amishman's gift for understatement and a rather un-Amish, zealous grin. When I grew up, he continued, my parents didn't have more than the necessities. We were taught that when we go away from the plate, it is empty. Today, there is so much wasted food. Waste not, want not, he concluded, polishing off the last morsel of his sandwich. On debt, he had this to say, You gotta make up what you don't have. Don't borrow it. On eating out, we frown upon eating at restaurants. Many Amish eat out occasionally, but apparently not under Eli's oversight. On the Amish work ethic, we work with our hands so we can help the poor, the Bible says to. Eli expressed concern about the immoderate spending habits now creeping into plain life and community. Money is our biggest danger, he said, stabbing a finger in the air. Too much leads to foolish spending, fancy foods. By the time we were ready to wrap up our chat, I felt that Eli had warmed up to me and I to him. Sure, he's kind of extreme, but I feel that he's a nice man, despite his severe pronouncements. I see you're wearing buttons there, Eli, I teased. I thought buttons were verboten. He grinned a wide and blazing grin and yanked open the top part of his shirt. I nearly fell into the bathtub. The underside of his shirt revealed Velcro inserts. I fooled you, didn't I? The Amish, I was to learn, are full of surprises. $400,000. Amos certainly surprised me. The 45-year-old farmer had saved $400,000 over the course of 20 years while renting a farm and raising 14 children. When I visited Amos and his wife Fern and their beautiful family, I looked for signs of stinginess of a wife and children suffering somehow under the regime of a tight-fisted, straw-hatted Scrooge. 
No one seems deprived. In fact, just the opposite. 